everyone welcome back to Sally's Rods and Customs um, tonight I'm going to try and start the the, um, the engine I've just got it sitting in the cradle at the moment got the battery on charge um, I've hooked up a few things here um, I'll show you what I've done I've just used I've just used the normal um, normal wiring harness out of, um, out of an old HQ hooked it up to the positive terminal to the positive terminal on the battery negative to the negative terminal or negative on the on the engine um, to give the ignition coil power I've um, this blue wire here goes to my coil wire which is this yellow one which runs up here to my coil but everything's just sick here at the moment and then the red one is is like is like my key positive which goes um, which goes to the positive terminal on the um, on the starter motor. So I'll give it a kick in the guts and we'll we'll see how it goes. Okay, so just showing you what I've done here before I start it. I have turned the engine over until I've got it onto well, top dead center and then I advanced it six degrees. There's my timing mark there on my, on my balancer, six degrees um, advanced, should be pretty close to where it should fire. I have, I've got a screwdriver in my pocket here, hopefully I can show you this in the hole here, in the, in the ball. So, I don't know if you can see it, there you go, you can see it right in there, you can see the piston so the piston at top dead center, right? I can't, can't put the screwdriver down the hole because the piston's there. So I'm only just doing it lightly. So the piston's at top dead center. I watched, as I rotated it over, I watched the valves rock. As the valves rocked, I seen the exhaust valve go down and come back up. And then I watched the inlet valve go down and back up. And when it came back up, it was pretty close to top dead center. So I knew that as it was it was sucking fuel in through the carburetion carburetion system um, when that valve was open and then as it closed i knew it was on its compression stroke on the way out because it would have had a gut full of fuel because you can see that's the runner there for your inlet and your exhaust one is in line there with your exhaust port so it's on its compression stroke it's at top dead center i validated that by the piston and you can actually still see the number one <laughs> number one written on that piston when I was assembling it um, so I did that stuff um, at the moment all I've done is I've I've run the fuel pump inlet off just off a little like there's only like a quarter of a jerry small jerry of fuel in there um, so I have fuel to it so it should suck fuel in through the through the pump um, top dead center I know the I know the valves are, aren't um, aren't rocking um over here what we got is um if i show you inside the the dizzy um so the dizzy the way the dizzy is now that front of the dizzy the front of the dizzy there where that points is number one um number one cylinder so i've got to i've just dropped this in here so i just got to adjust all the lead positions now to suit the firing order and there's the firing order down there one two seven eight four five six three and um, why did that light go out i'll just get another light here that's a bit dark without it but and i'll continue on all right there you go um the reason i haven't got the i really haven't got much light here is because i got the roller door or the panel lift door up um because i gotta start the car to jump the battery because the battery is not a great battery even though it's been on charge um, once I jump that I've got to um, and if this thing actually fires up it will um, it'll blow a lot of fumes out the bottom of the exhaust manifolds here so I don't really want to um, fill the place up with fumes so what I gotta do now is put the spark plug back in there and then I'll rearrange these leads and I'll um, I got a little bit of fuel in the bottle there to give it a squirt down the top and I'll start the I'll start the Jeep, get some power to the battery, and we'll see if this thing runs. Right, so a bit of a bit of a recap. 
We have power on the battery. I'm going to start the Jeep. Put the rocket cover back on. I've got the firing order correct, although I might have to adjust these leads. They're a little bit stretched. All the vacuum holes, I didn't have anything to block anything off. This is the choke hose. I just put a bit of rubber hose there. Put a little um, sort of like an air blower thing on just to try and block the air off. I didn't have a plug for it. Um, this is just a hose backed off. One's for the one's supposed to go to the transmission, one's supposed to go to your brake booster, but I just ran a hose around it to block it off. Got a fuel hose in this little jerry. It feels like it's sitting in the bottom. So I'll leave that there out of the way of the out of the way of the exhaust fumes. That's hooked up to the inlet there. Comes up through my pipe, should go through the filter into the carby. Um, choke should work. Um, and that fuel bowl fills up. Um, got the coil connected as far as I know up here. Dizzy's in the correct orientation. I lined it right up exactly on center for that six degrees I gave it on the on the um, timing marks on the master on the uh, master cylinder on the Pomo balancer. Got me fuel over there. I'll start the Jeep and we'll give it a kick in the gut, see what happens. Straight down the ball, see what happens. I'm not going to start it while I'm doing it, but see if I can put some down the bowl, down the vent tube. That's a fair bit of fuel. fuel down there but it doesn't have any fuel in the bowl so it's not um, 
doesn't feel like it's getting filled. So I'm going to take maybe take this pipe off here, off the filter, see if it's um, got any fuel coming out when I crank it. Put this rag under here. Don't want fuel freaking everywhere. Let's get out of there. Um, spanners are all over the place here. I'm going to take it off the end of it. That is here. Yep, there's fuel there. It's about out the side of here. Onto my rocket cover. <laughs> and it's um hasn't been baked on yet, so it's got fuel and now it's got a bit soft. So that's that little filter there could be causing me some grief because I actually bought a second hand one. I'm gonna take it off from here. See if I can get that open. fuel coming out that side as well so it kind of feels like kind of feels like a stuck blow or something let's just um, see if it's got any fuel there yeah no fuel going to it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the float out I'll, um, I'll just pause the video there till I pull it apart you have to watch me pull this off you'll see exactly what I'm doing and I'll show you what I find. So for those of you that haven't seen what the needle and seat looks like in one of these Strombergs, I showed you in the um, in a previous video. There's the new needle and seat there. You can see there's the needle inside it there. See so it's got like a rubber tip on it. It goes through. It goes through. I think you might be able to see. Where's the camera lens mm. it's on this side you can see the little bore hole in there you can see how you can see straight through you can see my finger go behind it the tip of this the tip of this needle goes down into that bore and it um, as as fuel level goes down this this comes out as the float goes down as it as the float comes up it pushes this needle back in like that and it blocks it blocks the flow so as you get fuel pressure pushing through the back side here it um, it pushes that needle off its seat like this and then as your float comes up like this the back of the float pushes this in and it blocks the flow it blocks that port off there so I took that out it looked a bit stuck I don't know if that's the actual, actual issue or not but um, I'm gonna put it back in and see what happens I'm gonna if I can see if the um, if the float is stuck at all I can see the back of it in here it's loose it doesn't feel like it's stuck so I don't know why it's not getting fuel into there I'll have to um, this back in and give it another go. Let's um, screw this baby in here without getting that, that rag stuck in it. Alright, nip it up. Get this back in its bore here. So it doesn't have doesn't have a blockage in this pipe. I know the fuel pump's working. I know the fuel is going through this filter, which is an original filter that I purchased off someone. Um, I put in an ultrasonic bath and it cleaned out all the crap that was inside. The mesh inside it was in good condition. Um, I just wanted the car to look as original as I can. Alright, that's tight, that's tight. That's still in there, no fuel's going up there. 
get that out of the way. Let's just see how it goes again this time. Give it a bit more fuel down the carby. A bit of fuel, but anyway, see how it goes. <laughs> Dead. I better get the um, car started. Obviously, I've cooked the bloody thing. Um, I'll just disconnect that coil for a bit. And I'll do some testing on the coil, see if I've killed it. But obviously, you can see it starts. Got some fuel issues at the moment. I just need to make sure that I'm getting fuel down the bowl from... Yep, I can see fuel squirting through there now. So it must have been that needle and seat that was stuck. I got fuel in the engine. And I just need to find out what's happening. So, when I find out, I'll let you know. All right, ladies and gents, got to call it a night. I've cooked the coil, it's red hot. Um, it's resistance reading is really poor. Um, I'll, I'll purchase a new one tomorrow and I'll, um, and we'll give it another crack. Right, our battery's charged. Let's um, see how it goes. Open the choke a bit. Get a fuel in the top there. Um, get my cranking wire here. And we'll see if it kicks this time. <laughs> Started too much. Um, got to get in the engine run stand, run the engine in. That's just getting it started. Um, overheated the coil before. I've ordered a new a new coil right. for it. Um, hopefully, whew, she's pretty firm. It's running really rich. Hopefully, get the new coil tomorrow or Monday, and um, should be running. You can hear it's sort of breaking up a little bit still. That coil's not great, but um, there you go. That's the 53 up and running. Engine built. Test run straight out the exhaust. Geez, hot already. Straight out the exhaust, um, ready to run in the car. No oil leaks. I checked through the rocket cover um, before before I started. There's a lot of oil on the on the rockers, so she's got plenty of oil up there, plenty of oil pressure. Um, ready to rock and roll. Keep watching. 
thanks again for watching Sully's Rods and Customs. Um, stick around for, for more videos. See you next time.